I'm on the other side of my craft room. So that means we will be talking about the We Create today. They sent me their newest machine, which is the We Create Vista. And I thought it would be a good idea to not just unbox it and set it up and do my first test, but to also kind of give you a little bit of comparison between the 10 watt diode laser and the 20 watt We Create diode laser. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is measure the outer parts of the We Create. So I'm going to just measure the width of it. I've already taken it out of the box. It wasn't hard to do that at all. So this is right about 25 inches in width and it is about, let's see, 18, 18 and a half inches in um width also, <laughs> uh, length times width times height. So this would be the length, all right? And then if I were to compare it to the other we create, this 20 watt we create, this one is right at about 22 and a half inches in width and 19 inches in length, all right? so. That's just an outside view. And really that size only matters if you're considering like what table should you use to purchase to put these on. This table right here, I purchased this one from Michaels. This one right here, I purchased from Amazon. Both of these tables will be linked below the video if you are in the market for a table already. All right, let's go ahead and unpack this. I have not opened it up. It is still sealed with the lock with the transport guard so i have not done anything other than take this out of the box let's go ahead and do that now before i do let me say what i say hello everyone and welcome to crafting with delanda it's me again delanda and thank you so much for joining me today in today's video we will be unboxing and opening and setting up the new we create vista and at the end of this video if you find it helpful please remember to like the video subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell for notifications because i do upload new content every single week now without further ado let's get started Now, I have not removed these pins that are on the left and right, so the machine is theoretically is still locked. What I'm going to do first is remove the pins that are on the left and right of the machine. Those are in place to keep everything, all of the packaging in place while the machine is being transported. When you open the machine, you'll notice that there is foam on the top and bottom, and then all of the connections and all of the essential equipment is included. There are two pieces of wood that come with the machine that have like sample projects on there. And then inside each of these boxes are all of the cords and the tools you'll need to actually get the machine connected. So I'm going to remove all of these boxes and then I will start to put together the bigger pieces which include the laser beds and the detachable tray. Now that the top part of the foam has been removed as well as all of the boxes, there's still one more piece of foam in here. I'm going to remove that and the white you see now is my actual table. What I'm also going to do is remove the screws that are on the left and right, right in front of those red labels that you see at the back of the machine. I'll use the tools that came along with the WeCreate. The laser beds are packaged separately as well as the detachable tray that you see here. That tray goes under the we create to catch any of the cut pieces of wood that you'll work with as you go along. Now that everything has been removed from inside the machine, I'm going to follow the directions on those red labels, which is to remove the two screws. There is a box that is called cable and tool bag 
holder. And inside this box, there is a bag that is filled with tools. This is the USB cord, and then there are some other cords. But inside this plastic bag right here, there are screwdrivers and nuts and bolts. And I am going to find the long screwdriver. Mine has a gray handle. Yours may be a different color. I'm going to use that to unscrew the two screws that are on the left in front of that red label and the two screws that are on the right in front of the red label as well. Remove this. If you were with me when I unboxed my We Create Vision, you may remember that one of the things that frustrated me was that I needed to be closer to the computer to connect via USB before I could connect via Wi-Fi. So I decided that it would be best if I set everything up over here at my desk and then get everything connected. So let's look at the back of the We Create and see what all of the connections are that are back here. There are essentially seven places to input on the back of the We Create Vista. However, we will only be using five of the input ports that are on the back, and I'll make sure to demonstrate how to do each of those. Let's continue. Before we do any of the connections in the back, if we are following the manual, the next step in this setup process to, is to install the laser beds. So you're going to put them inside the machine, making sure that the flat side of the laser beds is what is face up. After installing the laser beds, look in your bag of tools. You'll find a small baggie that looks like this. It has two little silicone plugs. There is one for the left and one for the right. Make sure to push the silicone plugs all the way in to the left and right. Make sure they are flush with the machine. This will help to make sure that none of the smoke ex escapes from inside the machine when it's in use. Okay, we're almost ready to start doing our connections. Let's take the other materials out of the box. The first box is the air assist kit. It comes with that hose and it also comes with the white piece that is the actual air assist. So there should be two things in that box. The next box is the power adapter. We're going to take that out. After the power adapter, you'll have a box that has the exhaust hose that should be just the one hose and the clamp. And last but not least, you will have a box that has the rotary kit. Take all of that out of the box. We are going to get everything set up in this tutorial. Now we're ready to start with our connections and we are going to go in order. First, we'll start with the air assist. It comes with that white box and a pipe. Take the end of the pipe that has the blue tape around it and you're going to connect that end to the side of the air assist. And then you're going to take the other end of the pipe and insert it into the first input. After you do that, you're going to take the end of the air assist with the prongs. It has two prongs. You're just going to line them up with the two prongs that are on the back of the We Create Vista, and then you will twist to tighten and secure the connection. There's nothing that goes into the third port. 
but let's move on to the power adapter. It comes in two parts. The first thing I'll do is insert the part that has the three prongs to connect the two pieces. And then I will insert the DC port into the back of the WeCreate Vista. I will plug it into the electrical outlet at a later time. Moving right along, let's insert the USB cable. Brace yourselves because at this point you might need to use actual tools. I'm not even sure if most people would consider these as tools because look at this baby wrench. You're going to use that baby wrench if you need to, to unscrew those four screws that are on the back where the hose will go. You may need it, you may not. I found that I really didn't need it because the screws were not tight right here in the back. I just use my fingers to unscrew those four screws. The hardest part will be finding somewhere to put them so you don't drop them. So I just put mine on top of my WeCreate as I was removing those four screws. You have removed the four screws. You're going to loosen the clamp that's on the connector. You can use the end of the wrench. I just decided to use a flat head screwdriver. One was not included. I had one at my house already. Just loosen it enough to remove it and also loosen it enough to let it go around the hose. The hose will have two twist ties that keep it in place. Just remove the twist ties. I don't think you're going to need them at a later time, but I still saved mine nonetheless. Now use your baby wrench to connect the hose connector to the exhaust outlet in the back. I tightened mine as tight as I could. You can see that my connection is secure with all four um, bolts or nuts on the back. And now what I've decided to do is I removed my clamp and I actually loosened it enough to put it around the hose. So what I'm going to do is make sure the hose fits securely on the back of my machine. And then I'm going to use my flathead screwdriver to tighten it again. And I'm making sure that it is as tight as I could get it. I just continue to tighten it until I just couldn't tighten it anymore. Then last but not least, you will be deciding if you are going to vent your machine out of a window or connect it to the fume extractor. I disconnected my 20 watt and I connected my 10 watt to the fume extractor so that we could get started with the sample projects and do a few other things with the new WeCreate Vista. All right, before we move over to the computer, let's just recap. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, basically seven input areas back here. One is inserted, two, there's nothing in the safety control input. There's number four inserted, number five. There's nothing in here in the fire safety gas input, and then our hose is inserted here. What I'm going to do now is make sure that my power is connected securely right here, and I will insert this end into my electrical outlet, and we will move over to the computer. I'm also going to turn on the power source back here. Let's move over to the computer so that we can, well, I'm not installing the software. I already have the software installed, but you will be installing the software if this is your first we create product let's move over to the computer now now i honestly think it's best if you follow the instructions included in the user manual instead of trying to follow along with me here because i already have the software downloaded so this is going to look much different for you if you don't already have a machine you're going to connect to the settings make sure your usb is connected you're going to go to Add a machine, you're going to look for the USB first, you'll get the USB connected, and then you'll follow the prompts to add your IP address and connect to the Wi-Fi for your machine. 
after you have all of that done, then you can go on to create your first project. Go over to the left panel and click on the T for text. And once you do that and click on the canvas, you'll see the word hello will pop up. You can move it anywhere on the wood or on the canvas that you want to. We're going to start with the word hello by doing a line engrave. And we're also going to add an additional copy to do a fill engrave just so you can see what both look like. Before we do that, let's go and get the proper setting. So I'm going to select wood. I'm selecting basswood, three millimeter, and I will click confirm at the bottom. I'm not going to make any changes to the settings. I'm going to use the default settings that are here. I'm going to click copy and then paste and add the additional copy so that you can see the difference between line engrave and fill engrave. A line engrave is basically an outline. A fill engrave is when you want to have the letters filled in. Most of the stuff in the software is self-explanatory. Some things you'll have to play around with as you go along. Okay, so you have to click refresh. I didn't realize that you had to have the machine open, so make sure the machine is open to click refresh. That's the only way the machine will actually start to recognize what's on the laser bed. So I've clicked refresh, it's refreshing now, and I'll click start, and we will kind of see what this process looks like. I thought I was recording the whole time and I actually wasn't. So you'll see the start of it and then you'll see what the end result looks like. Your machine finishes refreshing, it'll start the processing and it'll let you know the approximate amount of time or the estimated processing time. So according to this, it's going to take four minutes. I have to go over to the machine, close the lid and press the button that's on the outside. So this did really take right at about four minutes and maybe 30 seconds for the full processing to complete. Um, and all I was doing was a laser engrave of the word hello uh, filled in and as an outline. This is what the finished result looked like. Next, let's do laser engraving on Slate. I did this same exact project previously with my We Create Vision. What I'm going to do is use an image, an SVG that I imported from Creative Fabrica. I'm going to select the whole image and group it and then resize it to fit on the slate that I have. I'm just bringing it down to make sure it fits perfectly. Once I have the sizing correct, then I'll go into the settings and make sure they are accurate. I'm going to select slate with the custom setting that's already there with the default setting. I am going to just make a couple of changes by um, changing the settings to match what I want my slate to look like. I do want to do a fill engrave and I am going to change the power to 78 with a speed of 158. Okay, I'm not making any other changes. Let's see how this goes. I am going to make sure the machine is open. I'll click refresh and it'll let me know that it's going to take approximately six minutes and 48 seconds. I'll go over to the machine and press the button on the front and let's do a split screen to see how this all looks as it starts to process. This slate was engraved with the 20 watt. This slate was engraved with the 10 watt. You cannot tell the difference. They both look excellent. All right, let's continue. Don't be intimidated, you can do this. If you look at the rotary attachment, there are four holes on the top. I am going to take that double step 
component piece and I'm going to screw it into the third hole from the middle. So I'm taking the M4 10 screws, they are in the bag. I'm using the same screwdriver from the first time and I'm just screwing them into the third hole if you start at the center of the rotary attachment. You'll see me do this two more times. There are three pieces that look like double steps and I'm just screwing the, putting the screw into the third hole from the center. So you'll see there, there's two that you can see and then there's a third one. I'm screwing it in and I'll do the same thing for the third double step component. Slowing it down so you can really get a good visual of where mine is screwed in and how I have mine connected. I have it into the third hole from the center. What I'm going to do now is move the X axis to the front. I'm just pulling it back all the way back. Actually, I don't need to pull it back this far because what I have to do is reverse the laser module. So the first thing you're going to do is pull it back. If your machine is powered on, power it off. Now you will rotate the laser module. There's a knob on the left and one on the right. Twist one knob forward while simultaneously twisting the other knob backward. You'll keep doing that until you're able to rotate the laser module. Once you do that, once you loosen the screws enough, you'll just move it down to rotate it and then pull the X axis all the way back. Then tighten both screws so the laser module does not move. On the left side of the We Create Vista inside, the laser, you'll see two screws on the frame. Use the same screwdriver that we've been using this entire time to remove those two screws. On the rotary attachment, you'll see there are five holes. What you're going to do is line up those holes with the locating pin that is on the side panel where you just removed the screws. So you'll see one, I can kind of lift it up, lift up the lid a little bit. You can see there's a screw at the very front and then there's another one here in the back. You're going to line up your rotary attachment with those screws that are already there. You're going to use the M4 15 screws. These are the longest screws you should have in your bag of tools and you're going to screw those in to make sure the rotary attachment is secure to the machine. Okay, your machine is still powered off. Mine is completely attached. I'm going to insert these prongs into the port in the back. You just line it up and then make sure it's secure. Once you have everything in place, you can power the machine back on. I'm going to be using this 20 ounce black powder coated tumbler that I purchased from Amazon. I am going to remove the lid. There's nothing inside. And here is the tape measure that came with the We Create. I'm going to measure around the tumbler. Okay, so it's right at nine and a half inches in width. That's, that's the perimeter. All right, and I am going to 
make sure that my tumbler is going to fit in here. And if it doesn't fit, I'm just going to twist this right here because once you start to twist this, the, the part that holds the tumbler will move out to accommodate it. Now that my rotary is attached, I have my 20 ounce powder coated tumbler and I'm going to start to make adjustments to the jaw chuck to loosen it up so that I can insert the tumbler. You have the option of inserting the tumbler facing the rotary attachment or facing away from it. I'm going to insert mine facing the rotary attachment and I'm just tightening the jaw chuck around the top of the tumbler. And I'm also going to make sure that it is completely level. I'm going to continue to tighten it up first with my hands and then I'll use the chuck key that came with the rotary attachment. Make sure your tumbler is level by using the uh, rotary attachment and the included level. Also tighten it with the chuck key as needed. All right, I think I'm ready. I'm gonna press, the tumbler is secure. I'm gonna press start. Now that my machine is ready, it's time to prepare the software. Make sure your settings are on laser cylindrical at the very top right. Then download the image you're planning to use. I'm using this cow from Creative Fabrica. It is linked below the video. Bring the image into the software and then just start to resize it. When you see the cow that that comes in, this image that I'm using is not grouped yet, but I am going to group it. Choose customization. Um, because there is not a setting for black stainless steel, I just basically copied the red stainless steel settings and I click save. What I did then was click on black stainless steel and I clicked to confirm. Then I selected the full image and I grouped it so that all of those pieces would stay together. The next thing I did was I started to just resize the image so that it would go all the way around the tumbler, but you will need to know the set, the perimeter of the tumbler. So remember I measured mine and it was at 9.5. That's what I input right there for the perimeter settings. And then I also still had to do a little bit of adjusting because I wanted to make sure the image would wrap completely around the tumbler. Okay, so I have mine set to fill and grave. I clicked on refresh and my ultimate settings for the power and speed for the power I used 78 and I had mine set to a speed of 200. And because this was the first time um, doing any laser engraving with the WeCreate Vista, this was just a test to see how it would work. I click start. And I could see that it was scheduled to take about an hour and I click confirm here. It was supposed to take about an hour and 44 minutes. I feel like it took upwards of two and a half hours. Let's go over and see how this looks. Close the machine. And I'm going to press, press the button to start. Nervous. this part up. Okay, it's the moment of truth. I am going to remove the tumbler. That is what it looks like before I wipe it down. I am going to go rinse it off and come back and show you my finished
tumbler. I'm so excited about this. Now that we have finished three complete projects, let me share my overall thoughts about the new We Create Vista Diode Laser Engraving and Cutting Machine. I'll do a little bit of compare and contrast first, and then I'll tell you how I feel about it. Um, in comparison to the 20 watt We Create, yes, it is slower, which you can imagine it would be slower. It has less watts. Um, I would say that it's the same size in terms of the footprint that it, the space that it takes up, but it's not as heavy as the 20 watt. Um, it doesn't have the auto lift feature. It actually doesn't lift up at all, but they do carry um, risers that you can put underneath. Like if you wanted to maybe um, engrave something that was bigger than the amount of space or taller than the amount of space that um, is in the laser bed. So that's included. Um, it's different in terms of when you are preparing to do any laser engraving and cutting, when you're in the software, you actually have to keep the, the lid open in order to uh, focus it. So with uh, We Create Vision, the 20 watt, you have to have the lid closed for everything to happen, but you have to have it open in order for the, the camera to work and focus in on whatever you're engraving. Um, so it, it, you know, it's not as fast. Um, it, it takes more time definitely to do any cutting. It took four minutes to cut out the letters in my name, which was not a problem because I was just testing it out anyway. Um, I would say that if you are thinking about getting a laser engraving and cutting machine to go into sales, this is, <clears throat> unless you're adding this to a laser engraver you already have, this is probably not going to be useful for that. This is more useful for someone who um, maybe just wants to get into like the entry into laser engraving and cutting. Maybe you want to just make things for your friends and family, or you want to just be able to, you know, have some knowledge about how to use a diode laser. But this is not for someone who already has a thriving Etsy shop or a thriving platform where they want to produce bulk orders, I would definitely say, you know, start at the 20 watt range. This is not the starting point. However, now when I engraved this tumbler, this took upwards of two hours. In the software, it said that it would take an hour and some change, but it took upwards of two hours. And I blame myself because, I mean, I could tell that this was an intricate design. I'm very very, very, very impressed with how it was able to do all of the intricacy, intricacies that are on this design. It's a, it's a cow and it looks so cute. Um, I was very impressed with that. I just felt like it took a very long time, but I could expect that. So if I was trying to churn out 20 tumblers, I know that I wouldn't have my order finished, you know, within two days. It would take me a while to get that done. Um, I think that all things being considered in right now, the cost of the 10 watt um, We Create Vista is right at about $700. And I think that's a fair price. I actually think it's a good price, especially because it comes with the rotary attachment. So you can do tumblers. I know a lot of people who get into laser engraving, the first thing they want to do is tumblers and wood products, wood crafts and you know, I, if you don't have an extra thousand dollars in your budget for a laser engraving machine, then this is definitely the way to go. It was very easy to set it up. I already knew in advance that I would have to have the Vista close to my computer in order to set it up with the Bluetooth before moving it over to the permanent spot. So that was one thing that I had at my at my advantage. I feel like the rot rotary attachment was very easy to set up just like it was for the We Create Vision. Um, there isn't anything that I that I disliked about it. It, it was just slower. That's, that's, that's really the only thing I can say about it. But I think you can expect that because it's a 10 watt laser and not a 20 watt laser. Um, people ask, can you engrave acrylic? Um, it's not really for engraving acrylic, uh, clear acrylic because it is a diode laser. I know you can do it with a hack. I have not gotten into doing any hacks at all and I don't really intend to do any. 
Um, I will stick to doing, you know, just standard items, tumblers and wood crafts and leather and things like that. Um, hopefully I have answered any questions that you have about this. Um, some people have asked, do I have a discount code for the 40 watt laser? I am not sure if my code works on the 40 watt laser because I don't have the 40 watt laser and I don't plan to get one but you're definitely welcome to try it out. Um, if I have not answered any questions you have about this, please make sure you leave them down in the comments. Hopefully you did find this helpful. If you did, please remember to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the bell for notifications because I do upload new content every single week. Thank you so much for joining me today. And Thanks for watching. Bye.